Just think about being such a good ruler that your nickname became the Good King. Henry was that kind of king. He was a stand-up guy. As with almost every other good guy in the course of history, his life was filled with some nasty stuff, some of which he barely survived. He witnessed some of the greatest massacres and wars of his time, yet he managed to make a proper country out of war-torn France and promoted religious tolerance, agricultural development, a robust justice system, proper education, and his 16th century version of a greener infrastructure. Filled with battles, wars, toil and hardships, his life actually makes a good scenario for an action-packed movie. Bear with me to see how his enemies became his friends and how he managed to get out of the direst of situations and eventually rise to the French throne. Henry was born in Po, the capital of the Kingdom of Navarre. His mother was Jeanne, the Queen of Navarre, and had imposed a Protestant rule in her country. Henry of Navarre was baptized a Catholic, but was raised a Protestant by his mother and her court. After the death of his mother, Henry of Navarre was crowned the new King of Navarre, and he was to get married to Margaret of Valois of the French royal family. The wedding took place in Paris. Remember the Red Wedding from the Game of Thrones? Well, you can understand how Henry's wedding could be one of the inspiration points for that gruesome scene on a much larger scale. Many Protestants had gathered in Paris to celebrate the wedding of their role model, Henry of Navarre, who bolstered his claim to the throne with this marriage. The Catholics saw their naivety as an opportunity, and on the day of St. Bart and the following days, Catholics started killing them in thousands. Henry of Navarre barely saved his life by his wife's intervention and his promise to convert to Catholicism. The royals kept Henry of Navarre in captivity. However, he managed to break away from the courts and join his Protestant supporters. Thus began a new phase of the French wars of religion. Henry of Navarre was now fighting the new king of France, Henry III. Henry III was a man of ambition and when his methods to get rid of his own political enemies drew the super negative attention of the nobility and the public, he started losing support all around the country. And ironically, had to turn to Henry of Navarre for support. The two Henrys united against the Catholic League and decided to move and act together to take Paris and France from the hands of their enemies. While the war was ongoing, Henry III got murdered by a monk. Henry of Navarre was now heir presumptive for the French throne. Yet being a Protestant, did not work very well for his popularity, and this eventually led some nobles, including those who had been supporting him for the sake of Henry III, to abandon him. Seriously, first his marriage, now his succession to the throne. Is that guy ever gonna enjoy something in life? Let's see. When he was abandoned by the Catholics and excommunicated, and condemned as a ruler by the Pope, Henry of Navarre started thinking that the only really possible way for him to take the throne was to make the nobles bow down to his rule, region by region. With support from the English, he carried out military campaigns against the Catholic League. Although he was partially successful, Henry eventually understood that endless wars would not help him in the long term. Nothing good seemed to come out of constant bloodshed, and being the reasonable man he was, he did not want the rivers of his country to run red. He already had a strong claim to the throne, and to bolster his potential succession, and to bring a gruesome war to its end, he became a Catholic. His excommunication was lifted afterwards, and he was recognized as the King of France. He was now Henry IV of France, 
the good king. Despite having converted to Catholicism, he did not forget about his old Protestant fellows. He issued the Edict of Nantes, promoting tolerance and religious rights for the Protestants, most likely to bolster his popularity among the Catholics even further. He got married to Marie de Medici, a member of one of the most prominent and powerful Catholic families in Europe. Henry worked with his ally, Maximilian, the Duke of Sully, to make changes and improvements to the agricultural and infrastructural fields. They protected France from deforestation and encouraged, and at times even ordered, people to plant more trees. They also had new canals built. Some of the things he ordered to be built still remain intact today. Henry was also an admirer of art and education. He added the Grand Gallery to Louvre Palace. He invited artists and artisans of the world to come and work in Paris. This actually became a Parisian tradition and went on until Napoleon I banned it. Henry was a prominent patron of arts, to such a degree that the style of his time came to be known as Henry IV's style. He was quite active when it came to the matters of foreign states. He maintained relations with other powerful rulers of his time. He stood up against Habsburg dominance. The problems he was having with the Habsburgs would take a long time to be solved, even after his death. Henry encouraged the colonization of the Americas by the French. The first really successful French colonies in America were established during his reign. He also bolstered his kingdom's relations with the superpower of his time, the Ottoman Empire, and strengthened the tradition of Franco-Ottoman alliances. He was able to secure a pact and several capitulations with the Ottoman Empire, which were advantageous for France. Throughout his life, Henry had never been truly free of people trying to kill him. By some Catholic circles, he was seen as an usurper rather than a legit king. Thus, many tried their best to put an end to his reign and his life. They failed. Yet, on 14th of May, 1610, a Catholic radicalist managed to stab the good king. The king died, but his ideals lived on. Henry IV became a symbol of tolerance and common sense. A sense of respect and appreciation for the good king went on for ages. He was seen and is still seen today as an ideal king, having a place in the hearts of people from quite different social circles and ideologies.